The poor weather seems to have followed the boat wherever we go. Unfortunately, we were only able to load three torpedoes from the external reserves into their tubes. As of writing this, the seas have actually calmed down sufficiently. The sea state is so calm, actually, that we could reload external reserves right now. There are quite a few storm clouds overhead, though, so our window of opportunity may be very small. Despite this short window of opportunity, I will wait till nightfall to begin reloading. In the meantime, I will cross my fingers and hope Mother Nature gives me a break. Hello everybody, Wolf back here, and welcome back to another Saw Hunter 3 patrol log as we continue our adventures in the U-105. We're currently cruising through the, uh, well, nice and cloudy Caribbean at the moment, and it seems like there's going to be some rain soon. There's quite a bit of lightning and uh, thunder, as you can hear there. And, yeah, that is the current situation. We do have some issues here. If you recall last episode, we were reloading our external reserves during the nighttime, whenever crappy weather unfortunately halted our progression. So we only have two forward torpedoes loaded and one aft. So we're pretty much in the same boat that we were in uh, a few episodes back, if I recall. So I, I could actually load these, I think, now. Yeah, I could probably load these now. However, uh, in previous episodes, whenever I have decided to risk loading our external reserves on the surface during the daytime it has resulted in uh, disastrous circumstances so I'm gonna go ahead and avoid doing that mostly because uh, I'm just gonna recap whenever you reload your external reserves with the hard-coded fixes I have installed you are limited to you know around five knots and you can't crash dive immediately so if a destroyer is bearing down on your position uh, you just have to suck it up, Buttercup. And let's see, what do we got here? Uh, I didn't want that. Let's see what's the weather. So, and there's also a medium fog layer here. So, uh, the destroyers will be able to sneak on, sneak up on us rather quickly compared to, uh, normal. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just wait tonight so we have a chance to evade the enemy, uh, destroyers. Let's go ahead and check on our crew. It looks like we have one man that was tired in the diesel room, but overall, everyone's starting to uh, turn around. Uh, we're a bit tired, though. It has been a very long and, uh, frankly, rather stressful patrol. So let's go ahead and get Herman Hess into uh, the barracks and let him get some rest. So let's go ahead and check on the map. As you can see, we're currently sailing just south of Cuba here, and we're going to go towards the Lesser Antilles as... I stated earlier and I'm really hoping the weather will give us a break so we can finally reload those blasted torpedoes we had quite a bit of luck here in the straight sinking two tankers which was quite nice for our tonnage let's let's see here uh, oh I guess uh, I guess these are the tankers here I thought there were more pages than that but we only sunk this many ships duh so we sunk an intermediate tanker for 3,000 tons and then we sunk that modern tanker which was quite juicy it was 10,000 and one tons quite specific there with the one but uh, <laughs> you know I guess we ha do have some oddball numbers like this medium tanker up ahead up above this one was 8,112 tons quite specific but anywho we're gonna go ahead and continue onward we'll cruise at around 10 knots give or take uh, the weather might slow us down just a smidge, and we'll submerge rather frequently to do hydrophone checks. And, uh, yeah, uh, just keep on plucking away. You guys know the drill, so I will cut now, and I will get back to you guys momentarily. Well, here we are. It is May 27th now, just past midnight, and as you can see, the, <laughs> the seas are quite rough once again. I am not very surprised by this development because actually right after I stopped recording my first little uh, intro thing, uh, the weather got worse. So I probably wouldn't have been able to uh, reload an external reserve even if I wanted to at that time. I think it definitely is better to wait till night, especially after we had that mishap in episode one with the destroyer and reloading during the day. So. I'd rather not recreate that, uh, <laughs> if at all possible. Let's go ahead and do some crew management. I've been switching my sonar men in and out uh, when we dive and such. So, And someone got tired on the bridge. But overall, we haven't made too much progress since our, we were in DM-75 on our last update. So we've just moved over one grid. And we will continue watered. I will get back to you guys hopefully when weather conditions improve and we can load these... Uh, load these 
blooding externals in because man let's check fuel fuels at about 60 percent so we might want to we need to keep uh going home in the back of our mind because i do not want to run out of fuel out here i suppose we do have two we have a u tanker out here and cc and then also down here uh we have uh, the coriantis yeah down here so we do have options just in case but uh nothing nothing in the immediate area so I will keep going onward and get back to you guys soon. Oh my goodness. Do my eyes deceive me? What is all of this? Calm water? During my patrol? What? This is exciting. I am very pleased right now. So, we're going to hop on this opportunity and it calmed down at night. It's currently June 1st. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, so we're going to have to... Well, I have to move our butts here. Let's go ahead and torpedo man, you get in there. And let's go ahead and start operations in the aft as well. I only have one torpedo man. Well, well I'll just have to throw some petty officers in the stern to uh, make a do. And we'll also throw some more petty officers in here. And you know what? All of you can work. You, All of these petty officers have been slacking. All the sailors are doing the nitty-gritty hard work, so they will survive. Let's go ahead and begin reloads ASAP. Come on, please, please. Okay, it says they're in queue. Perfect. And this one is now moving. So we are beginning operations. As you see, we've dropped down to around four knots. And it is quite the night right now uh, it's still a little choppy but it should be okay for operations obviously we are able to do it so I'm not going to complain <laughs> uh, it's been a while what I last got I last uh, reported on May 27th I want to say so it's been it's been a little bit since our last update we haven't seen any ships I got a few ra radio contacts uh, I have one way down here heading southeast fast. I mean, that's the opposite direction, and it was storming when I got that earlier uh, this evening. So, yeah, I was just like, I'm not even going to try. But So, we're going to go ahead and reload these guys, and I'll get back to you guys, hopefully when they're all moved. And I am crossing my fingers and just hoping Mother Nature doesn't decide to pull another fast one on me and ruin my day. We've done it. The U-105 is back in the fight once again. We have successfully reloaded all of our external reserves. As you can see, it is daytime. We did wrap it up uh, as the sun started to rise over the U-105. But you know what? That's good enough for me. It's currently 7 o'clock in the morning. And we bumped our speed up to two-thirds. And we are just cruising around at nine knots. Let's yeah, get that down. Going. So we are back in the fight once again. So, the plan of action, I think, is I've had some requests for a port raid, and uh, the Lesser Antilles here, we have quite a bit of deep water. And I was looking at Bridgetown. Uh, it's a small little port here, just surrounded by deep water. It is a very deep water port, so I think I might hit this. Um, I am not a fan of port raids, as some of you know. Uh, those of you who watch my Silent Hunter 4 series know I do not like port raids very much, but... Uh, for this, I will, I'll, I'll do it just once. So we'll head to Bridgetown. That will be our objective. But if we catch something else in uh, the sea here, uh, I will definitely not hesitate to shoot back. As a matter of fact, yeah, we'll hit Bridgetown and then head south towards these other ports um, uh, by South America. Because if we look here on our handy dandy little map, there is a lot of shipping right here. And it looks like. Caraco is actually a convoy uh, convoy ship out from here so that is very interesting indeed so and we might actually get a convoy here which would be fun that'd be awesome so we're gonna go ahead and meander on towards Bridgetown I just got a radio message uh, here from the news <laughs> to you one of five last night Cologne was the target for the RAF's first 1000 bomber raid Wow quite interesting so, uh, as I mean, the war in the air is definitely starting to shift a little bit in, towards the Allies' favor. The, the cracks are starting to show in the fortress, so, and it won't take long before that catches up to us out here in the Atlantic. 
Uh, I keep saying it, it's going to get harder, and it really is. I'm really just preparing myself mentally for uh, the massive shift of uh, allied ASW efforts against us, because it's going to be nuts, and it's going to be scary. Um, and that's why... What the hell? Oh, no. What the f fuck? You gotta be kidding me. This was your fault. I blame you. Mother Nature just hates my guts. It's really just rubbing salt into the massive wound <laughs> here. <laughs> At least, oh, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. It can rain as much as it wants now. We've reloaded our external reserves. That's all that I cared about, really. So this is, this is fine. Everything is fine. Okay, we have a contact here of a ship heading southeast. Speed is slow. We're currently heading standard at around 13 knots in an attempt to catch up to it. She's heading southeast, so I think we should be able to uh, find her out here. Let's go ahead and get someone with an actual watchman qualification up on the bridge, please. And let's take a look. As you can see, the weather is quite choppy, uh, like when we left it off. The weather's actually been changing quite a bit. We had some rain there for a bit during our travels. It's currently June 4th. In the past four days, we have had uh, a quite a variety of weather, but I haven't been updating you guys on all of it. Although, I'm, I guess I probably should, really. Holy shit. Wow, that is... Okay. Alarm. Get under, boys. Get under. Please. Let's get under nice and fast. That was unexpected, I'm gonna be honest. I was really not expecting aircraft. It's been kind of a while since we've seen an aircraft, but it's good. It's definitely a wake-up call. I think we spotted her relatively far out, so we'll be able to dive just in time. But it's heading straight for us, which is very curious. Let's see, yeah, around 7 kilometers out. Okay, let's go ahead and make a turn. 270, please. And what kind of... There we go. There's the plane. It's all blurry. You can't really see it, but it's American. It's American. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get this boat under. And let's go ahead and slow down as well. We should be fine, I think. And you know what? While we're at it, let's go ahead and take a listen. Rudder and midships. So that merchant ship should be in front of us. But I don't think. Yeah, no... I'm not hearing any engine sounds way out there just yet. The target could still be very well out and out of hydrophone range. It is quite windy and quite rough on the surface, so we do have a lot of... Uh, lots of sounds going on. It's quite loud. Alright, so we're let's go ahead and level out at 80 meters, and we'll just stay low for just a little bit, then we'll resurface and press on the attack. So we lost our merchant friend down here, so we're going to go ahead and continue back on our original course and keep heading on towards Bridgetown. Uh, it's a little later in the afternoon, and as you can see, the weather's still pretty rough. Nothing too great out here. Whoa, that is a big wave. Alright, but we'll keep pressing on towards Bridgetown. And hopefully we have some success here. Okay, we got another interesting radio message here that will be quite helpful. Resupply boat U-463 has arrived at his patrol area and will be available in the vicinities of grid BD-65, North Atlantic, until late June 1943. And that's right out here, smack dab in the middle of the North Atlantic. That is quite handy and that is going to be very useful for us. Although our next patrol, I do think we are going to take a trip down past the equator down the coast of Africa, maybe to Cape Town actually, if we can manage it. But we'll see about that. That's my current plan. Uh, I think two patrols over here and on the United States for now is enough, but I kind of want to do something, do something else uh, during our next patrol. I'll obviously come back here later in the war. Well, of course, <laughs> if we're alive. We did pick up that, oh, this might be another ship. But it is heading away from us. We're going to continue onward. We're picking up quite a lot of traffic down here, uh, as expected, according to the map. So I'll definitely head down here once we uh, finish our business here uh, at Bridgetown. So um, I just wanted to update you guys on the 
milk cow that is now in the North Atlantic because that is a very good location, like I said. That's just right in the middle there. So whenever we are hunting North Atlantic convoys, we'll always have a supply of fresh food and fresh torpedoes. Anyway, I'll continue onward and, of course, update you guys as uh, things develop. Okay, we've gotten pretty close to the port on the surface during the daytime, I might add. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and go down to periscope depth now. Let's go ahead and get this boat I'll see under. You again. Weather's gotten a little bit worse once again, but that'll be okay. We'll be fine. I am worried about minefields at this port. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it would be mine since it's relatively a minor port. And also, uh, this is the island of Barbados. I probably butchered that, but uh, we'll see. I'm not sure. It might actually be fairly accurate. But anyway, uh, this could be very interesting. There might not even be anything worthy of a torpedo in here, but you know what? We'll go ahead and check it out. Uh, you guys have been asking for it, and you shall receive. Uh, you're not going to convince me to go and attack, say, New York Harbor or something like that. Because, I mean, this is an absolute death trap. Um, there are a million other things I would rather do. I mean, look at this choke point. We would just, we would just get screwed. <laughs> I can see myself dying here. Um, also, I mean, some of these other, yeah, it, it just would not go well. Norfolk might be fun, but still would not go very well. Yeah, uh, maybe some of like uh, Galveston or something. No, even that's terrible. Yeah, all of these suck. Um, and especially these British ports are going to be very heavily defended as well. So this early in the war port raids are a little more viable, but late in the war, uh, not so much. And also they can be fairly cheesy with the, uh, with the AI, but oh, I'll stop uh, rambling about port raids because no one, no one really cares. And let's see, let's go ahead and... Get everyone to sleep who needs to be resting. There we go. That should be sufficient for the time being. And we'll close in on this port. Let's check our hydrophones real fast just to be sure. Nothing's lurk. I hear something. Dead ahead. Sounds like a fishing trawler. It could be an escort, like a small defense ship but or that's a destroyer right off at 105 degrees that is most definitely a destroyer okay so we have one destroyer and one fishing smack possibly or it could be like a gunboat or an armed tugboat or something like that that's kind of the uh, what I'm expecting to see in this area. Let's go ahead and take another listen since my hydrophone man. That's pretty close, buddy. Can we uh, can we get you to start tracking that? Por favor. Guess not. Oh, well, I guess we'll have to live with it. What an imbecile. Yeah, we have our good man, Garrett Pole. Whatever. We'll just keep on closing. Let's go down to 40 meters. And the weather, or the water starts to get a little shallow up here, but overall, there is not much to worry about with this port. Let's. It's cutting in front of us. Let's go to Periscope depth. I'll see you again. Whoa. Did we just hear it disappear? Um, that's interesting. Okay, well, let's take a look. Let's do a quick uh, visual scan here. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything super close. So we'll go ahead and continue onward, and uh, I'll cut here and continue to 
close in on the port and keep my eyeballs and ears peeled for any uh, any contact. So I will cut now and get back to you guys very soon. Okay, and we are very close. We are rigged for silent running. We're gonna go ahead and drop the boat down to around two knots here as well. We're gonna wait for this escort to pass, you know, uh, to the right of us, and then we'll come up to periscope depth and take a little peek here. Uh, it is quite deep, I think, uh, according to, no, not this. Where is it? There we go. According to this, it's about as deep as it gets, but uh, I'm not 100% sure about that, how accurate it is. We are hanging out only at around 25 meters, so obviously we are not too deep. That's very standard. Also, I want to be careful not to push our boat too deep in a defensive situation because of the damage we took from those those uh, gunners on those merchant ships. Okay, so we are, he's passing us. Let's go ahead and bring the boat up to periscope depth. Alright, let's come up. Hopefully, I think the weather has actually calmed down as well, so that'll be something to take a look at. Hopefully it has. That would be quite nice if, uh, if Mother Nature would uh, do that for me, because I do want to run my torpedoes relatively shallow just in case there happens to be any torpedo nets in the uh, in the area. Also, I want to make my attacks from a relatively long range as well for that reason as well. Also, mines. I am I am scared of mines. Any everyone should be scared of mines. Mines are mines are quite scary. So, we're coming up nice and easy. I actually hydrophone operator, can you please track that warship for me? And uh, let's go ahead and get everyone yeah, you get in here as well. I want a weapon officer on station for this attack. So we're up at 14 meters. We can go ahead and begin to raise our attack scope now. Let's see what the weather's like. Man, a scope should breach the surface. Yep, perfect. All right, let's see. Looks like there's a lane mass. There's our destroyer friend. Uh, it's a patrol craft. Looks like just a little armed tugboat, so I'm not too worried about that. What the? F something's in flames there. And I'm craning the sea. Okay, we have a destroyer. It looks like another destroyer over there as well. Small merchant ship, possibly. We have something on fire. We have neutral shipping. Quite a bit of neutral shipping here. What's that on fire? God dang. That's a T3 tanker there and it's neutral. That is frustrating. <laughs> I would love to plug a torpedo into that thing. So we have a small merchant there. What's this thing on fire? I'm gonna go ahead and lock onto it. It's just a cargo ship. We have a tanker right there as well. Unfortunately, that tanker's at a pretty bad angle, it seems. I don't know if you guys can really see much. That destroyer is at a really good angle, though. That is very tempting, my friend. Very tempting indeed. Let's see. Make sure nothing else is uh, just crowded along the coast here. It doesn't really look like it. Okay, scope down. We'll have to get a little, a wee bit closer here. That destroyer is. God, that is so tempting. I would love to torpedo a destroyer in port. Okay, patrol craft is swinging back around. Let's go ahead and drop that back down. Let's go down to 40 meters, please. Okay. Let's go bring her down to a knot. I want to be, I want to act like a freaking hole in the water. And as we saw, the weather conditions were very calm. So we're going to be pretty easy to hear if we're making too much racket. Nice and easy. If I hear that Aztec ping, I'm gonna be quite, quite upset. <laughs> please don't, please don't start slamming away on that Aztec. All right, God damn, he's close. All right, boys, this is it here. If he passes us here, we are in the clear. If he doesn't, then uh, we're gonna have to disengage. I'm quite nervous. Looks like he's just chugging along. Oh boy, I think we are clear. 
Yes, sir. -y. I think he's going off. Yeah, get out of here. That's right. Don't mess with me. Okay, let's go ahead and adjust speed to two knots. Come up to periscope depth. And we'll we'll risk it. We'll inch closer just to get a bit of a better look here. Because since there's a lot of shipping in the harbor, surprisingly, but some of it's neutral, which is very disappointing. So I do want to make sure I don't start uh, torpedoing neutral merchant ships. All right, let's see here. There's a tanker there, and that is very, very tempting. Looks like we have a uh, merchant ship there, but it's behind the barricade. I can't make out what kind of tanker that is. I'm. Does the harbor really just drop? Off? I think. I think that's probably the tanker there, isn't it? Let's see. Let's see. I think it's probably a small tanker. If the tanker's in that little berth, that's going to be a one in a million shot. And I don't think I'm going to be able to pull that off, unfortunately. Why did I go backwards? What the hell is wrong with me? I went backwards in this dumb little manual, and now I have to click through eternity. The tankers are normally in the front. Okay, let's go ahead and pop that on. Yeah, that's the tanker in there. That's going to be a very difficult shot. Honestly, the two targets that seem the easiest are these ones out here. Uh, the destroyer quite frankly is a is that a destroyer yeah it's a destroyer that looks like a pretty easy target to actually hit um, looks like the right side of the port is just filled with neutral shipping which is a waste so yeah I think uh, the destroyer is probably the juiciest target here Yeah, let's, let's get the destroyer. Let's go ahead and uh, begin the identification process. Lock on target. It's probably going to be a British destroyer. And let's see. Two stacker. Looks like it has a pretty definite superstructure up there. Um, I'm not too good at identifying destroyers. So it looks like the stacks are vertical. They're not at an angle like this here. Now, these are cruisers. Like, look at these things. They all look the same. It's definitely not a hunt. I know what those are. But it might be a C and D class. Or an A and B class. Wow, the British and their names. <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay, we'll go ahead and go with A and B class. Actually, it's definitely not. I think it might be a C and D because we have this short, stubby f funnel in the front and then a, a thin funnel in aft. Let's see what else we got going on. Tribal. I can't make out the guns. The guns are very distinctive on the tribal class destroyers. It's like we have this aft section back here. Y yeah, very. It could be a tribal. V and W as well is very, very possible. You know what? I think it's probably closer to a V and W class. These are more popular. There's more of these around, so we'll go ahead and do V and W. Uh, that little tugboat is off in nowhere. Um, let's go ahead and you know what we're gonna plot a course and we're gonna swing around and try to hit this thing with an aft tube. I think that'll be best and we'll already be turning away from the harbor once we let the torpedoes go which is a uh, pretty good move in my opinion so let's go ahead and try to make this work. Let's go ahead and go standard that freaking destroyer is coming back. Oh boy. So let's go ahead and unlock from target, scope down, drop down to 40 meters once again. And we'll pop back up and pop this destroyer. Yeah, a lot of these other targets in the harbor are just uh, kind of hard to get to, and they're not very large. So given the choice, I'd rather torpedo the tin can and uh, get a nice pretty explosion picking up... Uh, them as stationary now. Let's go ahead and drop down speed. Let's go deeper, Chief. That destroyer is crossing right in front of us. Once again. Hopefully we evade his uh, hydrophones. 
and we are in the clear once again I think so we'll go ahead and begin to pop back up come up come up come up come up and let's get this boat on the move two knots it says one knot but the thing says two it gets kind of finicky at these low speeds the game doesn't know what it wants oh boy oh boy I'm getting nervous get nervous and we're picking up all the stationary ships now. I guess they're uh, loading cargo or something, making quite a bit of noise that our hydrophone operator is able to uh, pick them out, which is nice of him. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hydrophone Operator, doing something useful for once. Mmm, delicious. All right. So we probably are in a fairly good position uh, to just start swinging around and uh, commence the attack. Let's see, it's about three hours before midnight here. There you are. Yeah, I think that actually might be a BMW class. All right, lock on target. Let's go ahead and swing this boat around. And also, if we torpedoed one of these merchant ships in here, that tanker is tempting though but if we torpedoed one of these merchant ships you know uh, this guy would definitely fire up his engines and come back at, come after us so let's go ahead and just kill two birds one stone torpedo the scary destroyer and it is nighttime so hopefully he won't be able to see my bubble trail uh, mr. patrol boat swinging back around that isn't nerve-wracking oh now it's a race against time Okay, let's go ahead and speed this up. Let's go three knots. Let's get a little risky. Let's get a little spicy here. Three knots. Alright. Okay. Lock that in. Range. He is about... Yeah, whatever. It doesn't really matter that much, but uh, I do want to be sure I get it right. Torpedo depth. It looks like the keel or the draft of the ship is 3.5 meters. We'll go ahead and set our depth to 2 meters. That should be able to run over. Actually, let's do 1.5 just in case there is a torpedo net. Speed, we'll do slow impact pistol. And we're setting up the wrong tubes. Speed, long range impact pistol, torpedo depth. 1.5 meters angle on bow he is at pretty much a 90 degree uh, AOB <clears throat> here not that it matters because he is stationary and let's go ahead and get range one last one more time here um, and let's go ahead and rudder amidships please let's see here what do we got uh, let's go ahead and turn just a little bit make this nice and perfect. I don't want to screw this up <laughs> That would be embarrassing uh, Seven six we want the gyro angle to be as close to zero as really possible here All right rudder midships All right tube five Please don't fail me, baby. Please don't fail me. Let's go ahead and lock all this in one more time open tube 5 and yeah we overshot just a smidge there as you can see that's okay this will suffice let's get try to get range once again Line up. we could ping but that would obviously be be suicidal oh, God, stupid wave there we go yeah I think that's about right we'll just go ahead and manually put in 2.5 all right, angle on bow, just like so. All right, tube five is open, ready to fire. Tube five, los. Tube five, los. Scope down, bring us down to 40 meters. Let's check the map, and see if that thing is heading hot straight normal. It sure is, that looks relatively good it might hit a tad aft looks like our uh, run time is actually going to be closer to three minutes or so according to uh, the map here so let's go ahead and go ahead and watch that little timer go 
And you know what? Let's let's watch. Let's watch our handiwork because that's always fun. Also, where's my destroyer friend? Oh, let's see. Oh, I heard a torpedo. I hear the destroyer now. Ooh. It's a, it's a nice looking destroyer. I don't actually, I don't think that's a VNW class. I think I misidentified here. Well, anyway, there's our other destroyer friend that's tracking us. It's, he's about to have a uh, interesting day. And uh, this VNW, or whatever the heck it is, it's torpedoes close to impact, is about to have an explosive day. Huh? No? Not really? There's the torpedo. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. This will be very interesting. Very interesting indeed. I'm looking for the little wake. Looking for my torpedo. It's so dark down here. It's very hard to see. And I lost the wake too. There's the wake. Oh, that actually looks fairly good. Hopefully we don't get a bounce or anything too annoying. Let's go ahead and just watch here. We'll just go ahead and watch. And any minute now. I'm trying to set this up for thumbnail opportunities right here. Because that's what really matters is flashy thumbnails and screenshots <laughs> I lost my torpedo it's going so slow I'm used to using the fast speed torpedoes and this thing is just moving at a bloody snail's pace did we miss oh maybe we missed Oh no, I think... Torpedo hat Ziel verfehlt, Herr Kaloyn! Fuck. What? I wonder what happened. I should have been watching it. Let's go Come back up to Periscope Kaloyn. depth. I kind of want to try again. What? That's lame. Maybe it ran deep? Oh, Periscope depth was a bad idea. Mr. Jerry is hanging out right above us. Ah! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Go down to 40 meters, all ahead's 5 knots. Oh man. That's annoying that torpedo missed. Uh, well, they know we're here. I bet they heard that torpedo explode and were like, what the hell was that? Go down to 100 meters, please. Oh, I guess you can say this was a failed port raid on Bridgetown. Not my finest work. And that destroyer is looking mighty close. Looks like he's coming in for an attack run. I guess we're going to find out if this guy has depth charges. Where is he? Oh yeah, he's hauling ass. Derzeitige Tiefe 6-0. Hmm. Yeah, he might be getting ready to drop that part. Derzeitige Tiefe 7-0. He's running behind us. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's the depth charges. That's what I was looking for. Wasserbomben. Oh, he's laying quite a Derzeitige few eggs. Tiefe, acht, All ahead flank. Fahrt voraus. Oh, shit, I'm scared now. Fahrt voraus. Neuer Kurs, drei, vier, drei. Go down to 120 Neue meters. Tiefe, ein, zwei, meter. Uh, explosions. Derzeitige Tiefe, neun, null. I think you set him too shallow. Oh, 
derzeitige Tiefe 1-0-0. Kontakt Kriegsschiff kommt näher auf 1-3-9. Große Entfernung. Alright, we're good. Drop down. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Let's hang out at 120 meters. This is about as... I'm gonna set a hard limit on myself at 160 due to our whole damage. I'm not gonna go any lower than 160, although I don't think I'll need it unless they do mobilize these other two destroyers, which we do hear one. Oh no, that is concerning. Oh no, this this might have gotten quite bad for ourselves. Okay, well let's go ahead and turn. Let's bring her down to two knots, please. Is that destroyer coming towards us? I think it might be. So this is developing into a situation. Um, yikes. So I'm going to go ahead and try to avoid this destroyer. And I'll get back to you guys soon. Uh, whenever he starts laying his next pattern of little eggs. So. Or depth charges all ahead of flank. Hard to port. Alright, now we lay in wait. You can hear a screws churning up the water right above us. Hopefully we can evade them here. No explosions, he set them deep. Also, okay. That was off, but that was just one. That was just the appetizer. Maybe he just dropped one. Oh, false alarm, I guess. Oh, there's another. We're not getting rattled at all, so they are pretty distant. Let's go ahead and slow down rudder amidships. Okay, we got out of another one. Uh, now there's a whole bunch of them exploding. Definitely a pretty thick pattern there. Alright, well, we'll continue onward. The other destroyer has indeed mobilized and is heading right this way, so that is very concerning. And I, I was thinking, that torpedo we launched at the destroyer could have very well have been a dud. Uh, the angle was not perfect. It was not exactly 90 degrees. So it could have just bounced off the hull and, uh, god damn, that's a lot of depth charges. But I was thinking it could have just bounced off the hole and was a dud. Uh, that is very possible. Although, I don't know. I wish I was looking at it and not just looking at the destroyer waiting for the pretty explosion like an imbecile. But uh, <laughs> I guess I've learned my lesson there. Anyway, we'll never know. It'll be a mystery. Just like uh, most dud, all dud torpedoes really were to submarine commanders. Uh, they didn't know why they missed, if it was their fault or the torpedo, so neither shall we. So we're just going to sit down here and listen to the depth charges go off, and I'll get back to you guys whenever probably number two joins the fight and uh, starts putting on the pressure. Brief update, both the destroyers have now joined the fight, but they're both kind of dropping their depth charges aft of us. I think we are kind of getting rid of them. Yeah, they're both behind us and they're dropping their depth charges back here. Granted, it's only like a 500 meter, <laughs> you know, distance between us, but uh, I think we're starting to give them the slip. As you see, can see, I've, I've slowly been inching deeper and deeper because I'm kind of worried. Um, I mean, I'm not too worried, but if we get hit by one of those depth charges, it's probably game over for us, really. Uh, I don't think we can survive much. Um, damage that's close to us now of course if a depth charge you know lands right on top of us or you know um, you know maybe 10 meters to either side of us maybe a little less than 10 meters but relatively close to us uh, we're dead that's an insta kill so we do want to be <laughs> cautious of that so we're going to go ahead and keep on chugging onward I'm not sure how long this episode has actually been going on for I know I've been recording for an awfully long time but Maybe you guys will be getting an extra long episode here. We shall see about that. So, I'll continue onward, and I'll probably, hopefully I get back to you guys whenever we shake in these guys, but their depth charge attacks are very frequent. Uh, these are fairly small destroyers, so they might run out of depth charges too. That is something to keep in mind, so. Uh, yeah, I wanna keep on, keep on trying to evade these guys, doing zigs and zags and changing depth. 
and uh, adjusting speed whenever <laughs> they're right on top of us and dropping their depth charges. Quite fun. Well, it's been quite a while since the destroyers have dropped any depth charges, and this one's kind of off in the distance and getting in our baffles now, so we probably won't be able to hear them. I'm actually going to make a turn just to fix that, just in case, but I think we're in the clear. I think we successfully evaded those two uh, Tommy destroyers, so we should be all good. Uh, unfortunately, that attack was <laughs> quite a disaster. Uh, one torpedo lost. Uh, nothing in return and then we got depth charged well i guess our return was being depth charged but yeah not not my best moment but i have to say that was quite exciting uh i haven't been depth charged too often in this series yet but it will become quite a common occurrence i will assure you of that and it will be much deadlier uh with hedgehogs and forward firing you know anti-submarine uh, weapon system, so it's going to be it's going to get quite interesting. But for now, this episode has gone on for quite a while, and I will leave you guys with this. So thank you all for watching. As always, this is Wolfpack three four five signing off, and I will see you guys on the next episode. <laughs>